Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In the previous video, we talked extensively about the loop of Henle, what happens in each limb of the loop of Henle, and then we defined this process as countercurrent multiplication. Remember with the loop of Henle, in the ascending limb, we have ion reabsorption into the blood, and so we reabsorb sodium, potassium, and chloride mainly. And remember that these substances, these ions, move from the limb initially into the interstitial regions before going into the blood. And that creates this high osmotic pressure or osmotic gradient of these ions in the interstitial region. Okay? And so because we have a high osmotic pressure here due to these ions, that drives water reabsorption from the descending limb. Okay? And water reabsorption only occurs in the descending limb. And water reabsorption is so important. It's probably the most important function of the loop of Henle. Uh, if we don't have sufficient reabsorption of water, we dehydrate. And remember, all of your cells have to have water in order to function optimally. Okay? So this water reabsorption is very important. And this system was called countercurrent multiplication. Well, it turns out that there's another way that we can further drive this water reabsorption, and it's through a process called urea recycling, which is what we're going to talk about in this video. But first, we need to really talk about urea. So urea is a natural degradation product of amino acid metabolism. So when amino acids are degraded, this is primarily done in the liver, but it can also be done in other peripheral tissues, amino acids have to be deaminated. Okay, so they have this ammonia group on them, which is an amine functional group, but it has to be removed in order to metabolize them. So we have this process called oxidative deamination. Um, this is done through some enzymes, and they convert the amino acid into a carbon skeleton. That carbon skeleton can then go through some kind of enzymatic pathway, and you can get energy from that amino acid. Okay? But notice in the oxidative deamination process, we get ammonia production. Now, ammonia itself is toxic. So ammonia, if it builds up, let's say, in neurons, it can actually cause the death of those neurons and all sorts of issues, things like mental retardation if it occurs early in life. So this is very bad. So ammonia, through various processes, is transported to the kidney, um, which is where the urea cycle occurs. The urea cycle you probably don't need to know much about for an anatomy course, although if you took biochemistry you would, is an enzymatic pathway that converts ammonia into an excretable product called urea. So urea is eliminated in the urine, and it is the uh, final degradation product of ammonia, and it's produced by the urea cycle. Now, urea is also toxic in high amounts, which is why this is done in the kidney, um, and so it's the job of the kidney to eliminate the urea through the tubule system. Okay? However, this urea is not just a simple waste product. It turns out that the body is going to utilize that urea for one other function, and it's a very important function, and it is to drive the reabsorption of more water from the loop of Henle. Okay? So this is jumping a little bit ahead. Um, you see here the glomerulus. Here's the proximal convoluted tubule. We have the loop of Henle right here. We have not talked about the distal convoluted tubule yet or the collecting ducts, uh, but this down here is a system that we call the collecting ducts. Right? Now, the major function of the collecting duct, as you could probably see right here, is more water reabsorption. Water reabsorption is very, very important. But it's going to turn out that the collecting ducts will actually dump some of the urea into the interstitial region right here. But let's suppose at first that that doesn't occur, so there's no urea recycling. Urea is not moved from the collecting ducts into this interstitial region. Well, we still have this ion pump system in the ascending limb of the loop of Henle, so we have these ions move out and we get water reabsorption. Okay? But it would only be a little bit of water reabsorption relatively, but we want to maximize water reabsorption. So what really happens is this. From the collecting ducts, we actually have the movement of urea out into the interstitial area. So this is urea. And so remember in the loop of Henle video, remember how these ions, when they're moved out of the ascending limb of the loop of Henle into the interstitial area before being reabsorbed into the blood, they increase the osmotic pressure or the osmotic gradient in the interstitial region. And that drives water reabsorption. 
It turns out that when urea is pumped from the collecting ducts into this interstitial region, urea acts as a solute as well that further increases this osmotic pressure. Okay, or this osmotic gradient. And so you have more solutes here in the interstitial region, and so you get even more water reabsorption. So you get all this water reabsorption when urea is dumped into here. Versus if you didn't have any urea, you only get, relatively speaking, a little water reabsorption. So this urea recycling is very important. Urea will be dumped from the collecting duct into the interstitial area right here, and that will drive even more water reabsorption. But this urea doesn't just stay here. It'll actually move back into, it'll be secreted back into the ascending limb of the loop of Henle, and then it'll just go back up here through the distal convoluted tubule, back to the collecting ducts, and then it can just go throughout the cycle many, many times. And what that serves to do is to drive further water reabsorption. Now it is true, a lot of this urea is actually excreted into the urine. There is only some fraction of it that gets moved into the interstitial region. But it's just enough of it to where it can actually increase this osmotic pressure in here, or osmotic gradient, and then that further drives water reabsorption. Okay. So some of it is excreted, you do have to have some of that, but then some of it is also recycled in this fashion. Okay? And this process serves to get more water reabsorbed. I think you're going to find with the nephrons, even though we do have to eliminate some water, really getting as much of this water reabsorbed as possible for most circumstances is probably the most important function. It's very, very critical. Okay? So hopefully this made sense to you. In the next video, we're going to discuss the distal convoluted tubule and the collecting ducts, and hopefully um, these two systems will make a little bit more sense. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.